church on this okay. blessed Memorial Day weekend. Um, with us today we have Pastor Rick Point, and he is um, filling in while we have this two-week transition until we have our settled pastor, Pastor Anthony Christophels, who will be joining us next week. Um, I want to remind you that today is only one 9 o'clock service, and it will be throughout the summer. Um, so if you come at 1030, we'll glad for you to smell the flowers, but um, we won't have a, a worship service at that time. Um, any more announcements for this morning? I guess no. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. 
Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Oh, sorry. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet the, uh, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew at me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now this, that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a, king a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
Well, I've been with you before, and just a little background in case um, you haven't been here when I've been here or, or, or online. I'm Pastor Rick Hoime, and I'm a retired pastor, and my wife and I live uh, just south of Painesville. And um, it's a little background before, for what I'm going to say in the sermon, but um, I've been a pastor now. It's coming up on 42 years. And um, served four different parishes. And then the last years before I retired, I served as a bishop in northwest Wisconsin. And um, then when we retired, we moved to Minnesota, as God intended everyone to do. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, it, it's good to be here. And I want to share one other thing before my message. Uh, I was here last week, obviously. And um, I think it was Wednesday... My, my phone rings, and when, when I'm retired, my phone never rings, so it's kind of a big deal. And so I looked at it, and I, the name came up. It's, it's, it was one of the businesses in Painesville, and I've done some work with them, so I thought it was kind of work stuff. And I, oh, I'll give you the name, because it's, it's advertising, Wimmer Landscaping. And that's important because uh, it's a husband and wife who work there, and, the, and it was the wife, and I know her, and she knows me, and she and her husband are good good, strong Catholics, um, very faithful. And she called, and she, she always calls me Pastor Hoime. She goes, Pastor Hoime, I just called to tell you thank you for your sermon on Sunday. <laughs> you know how you, you, the brain just doesn't connect? And I'm going, Connie, you got to help me here. I have, how did you hear me on Sunday? She goes, oh, John and I listened to you on the radio. Chasm Radio. And I wanted to share that with you because you never know. You never know. So thank you for your ministry through that radio. It works. It works. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> so this week the new preacher shows up. And I'm just guessing. You're just kind of going, Phew. it's been a long time. Since you've had, you know, a real called preacher. And I'm also just guessing many of you are going, oh, we can relax, we can sit back, we can enjoy. Because finally, our pastor will be here. And those are all good things. But I've learned a few things through the years as a pastor and I learned a lot as a bishop. And today's Old Testament lesson especially, excuse me, got me thinking about this. As Isaiah was called to be a prophet. And he wasn't quite sure that this was something he wanted to do. But the picture from the, from the book of Isaiah is of this sort of unwilling, uncertain man given this vision of these, these angelic creatures, the seraphs with six wings circling around the throne of God in heaven and of his unworthiness to do what God was calling him to do, and of the one seraph coming down and touching his lips with a burning coal to purify him in the words that come out of his mouth. And as I was reading that, I sensed every time I started a new call, I felt like Isaiah. God, I don't know if I can do this. I'd be excited and scared, nervous and confident, but always felt like I wasn't worthy. To stand up in front of a congregation like you and to be your pastor. So I don't know your new pastor, and I don't know what he's thinking. But I do know 
Do you need to pray for him? And to pray for your congregation that you begin this journey together and that you go where God wants you to go, which isn't always where we want to go. But through prayer, you will go where God wants you to go. You know, congregations are, are interesting things, and um, today is Trinity Sunday. So I'm going to ask you just for a, a couple of seconds here, is, is, you know, one of the symbols for Trinity, I don't know if we have one here, I don't see one up here, but oftentimes it's there, is a triangle. So just picture a triangle in your mind real quickly. Okay, got it? And I'm guessing that what you picture is most likely an equilateral triangle, you know, where all three sides are equal. And I'm also guessing that as you pictured it, it's sitting on, you know, on the, the widest part, right? You know, and then it goes up like this. Okay? And, and that's a good way to picture it. Now, the way that most churches function is like that triangle. And the, the irony is that the way the churches function and the way that the Bible functioned were sort of the other way around. And I'll get to this. So the way we tend to think of churches is, uh, how many members are, are here at Our Saviors? Any idea, roughly? How many? About 200 members? Okay. So the way most churches function is, is you have about 200 people. Okay, and that's the wide part of the of the, the triangle. You're down here, right? And then, you're, then you elect leadership, church council, right? And, and so the 200 people down here give direction to the church council going up this way. Okay? And you might have committees and boards and all that. And then finally, then the committees and the boards, the church council then, give that direction to the pastor who's, who's sitting up here on that really sharp point up at the top of the triangle. Okay. And then the, the assumption is then the pastor goes out and does that stuff. We're going to do ministry. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Well, it, it, in theory that, that kind of works, but it's, that's not how it works in the Bible, which is fascinating. The way it works in the Bible, the way I understand it is, you turn that triangle upside down. And you call a pastor to lead you. So now the pastor is still at the point, but instead of being up here, he's down here. And the pastor then gathers around him the people that you elect to work with the pastor. So now the triangle gets a little wider. Okay? And then those people then work with all of you who are now up at the top of the triangle, like this. Now, to put it in a different way, our Savior's Lutheran Church has been given a ministry by God. For the community of Albany, the communities that surround it, of Minnesota, the United States, all in the world. And you have a choice on how that ministry gets done. With the triangle the first way, you got this guy up at the top who's supposed to get all the work done. Or if you do it the second way, you got all these people that are going to get all the work done. And in my mind, the second way makes more sense. If we look to our pastor to care for us, certainly, to shepherd us, certainly, but also to lead us, not by himself. Lord knows I wasn't smart enough to do that. And that's that's the, the problem with my little Trinity thing. But, but to just boom. And to get out of the way and let God get God's work done. But the problem gets to be is... Um, we're not always sure what God's work is. When I started my, my 
in my last congregation, I came into a congregation that had been through just, just a war. They, they were tired, they were beat down, they had, the congregation had split, they just, oh, it was, it was a mess. And that was like 10 years before I got there, but we, we don't always heal quickly. But the thing I noticed very quickly was they weren't really sure what they were supposed to be doing. All they knew is their job was to get more people in the church so they could get more money and pay the bills. End of discussion. So therefore, that was my job. Pastor, you got to get more people in this church so we get more money so we can pay the bills. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, and we worked on that for a while, but I think, I don't, geez, I don't find that in the Bible. So we brought a guy in, a consultant. His name was Kevin Ford. And we flew him in. This was a big deal. We had a consultant in. He flew on an airplane. And, and he worked with, a, with a, a, the leadership, the church council, but also we brought in a variety of other people. And we spent a lot of time. He surveyed the, oh man, it was, and I was a nervous wreck the whole time because I just figured when it all got said and done, they were going to fire me and then we were going to be fine. But through that whole process, he said one thing. And I guess if you can remember one thing from what I say this morning, this might be it. He said, your job as the leaders of this congregation is to determine the three things that God is calling you to do better than any other church in the world. There's the Trinity again, right? What are the three things that God is calling you to do better than any other church in the world? Because he said this. He said, the trouble with most churches is they try to do too many things well and they end up doing nothing well. Because they're trying to please everybody and keep everybody happy. By the way, Isaiah was really bad at that and so was Jesus. And it didn't end well for either one of them. So I give that to you to maybe give to your pastor. Or you can forget I said any of this. It's up to you. But what are the three things that our Savior is Lutheran? It's being called by God to do better than any other church in the world. And can those three things be done by just a small handful of people? I know the answer to that. That never works. So this week, as your new preacher arrives, surround him with your love. You don't even know him yet. But still, surround him with your love and your prayers. And envision yourself at the top of that triangle is one of the saints that God has put in this place to go out and change the world. To change the world. And to discover those things that God wants you to do better than any other church in the world. One little postscript. I left that last congregation in the year 2013. So that's what, eight years ago? Eight years ago. In the life of a church, that's a, you know, that's a long time. I was talking to the pastor who followed me not too long ago, and it's kind of funny. He said, we had a consultant come in, help us figure out what, what, we, you know, what God wants us to do. And we got all said and done. You know what they learned? It was the same three things. That came to them in the year 2000. That they are still trying to do better than any other church in the world. And it's an amazing place. And so is this. So y'all come back next Sunday. 
And don't worry about him learning your name. Just so when he leaves this place, he goes, oh my goodness. These people are praying for me. And together, we're going to get this done. Amen. stand. We'll confess together our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all your children enjoy peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma and violence. We give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. 
We pray for healing physically and more for those we pray to hear. Greg, Jane, Diane, Emmett, Julie, Cindy, Betty, Laura, Floyd, Shirley, Sue, Brian, Marlo, Chad, Shirley T, Marguerite, Marion, Eric, and those we name aloud or in our hearts, Kelly, Peter, Allie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community of our Savior's Lutheran Church, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in faith. Remember us also, those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Christ, peace be with you. Can you have a sign of peace to your neighbors around you? Peace. And then we turn around um, at the camera with the pink stuffy and the high next to it. We'll say peace to our neighbors on Facebook. Peace. We remember now our generosity. Um, there are many different options to um, give your... Uh, offering. Um, there are ways to do that online. If you go to our website, there's an online giving button as well as an app you can download. Um, uh, offerings can always be received by mail and if you have them with you today, they can be left in the basket towards the back. We sing together our offering song. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the white night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit across time and space, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. You now take your communion set and peel the top part off to reveal the wafer, the body of Christ given for you. And then peel away underneath. I encourage you to face it away from you in case it splashes. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Christ the Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. So good morning once again. <laughs> um, I want to say a great big shout out and thank you to Kyle and Michelle Evenson for sponsoring our um, Chasm radio broadcast. Um, just a reminder that these are our summer hours now, so only 9 o'clock service on Sunday. And beginning on June 9th, we'll have Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Next Sunday is Pastor Anthony's first uh, Sunday with us, and we will also be having a pancake, 
pancake and sausage feed. So um, we'd like to get numbers on those. So if you haven't put in an RSVP online yet, please do so. And if you need help doing that, um, just give the church office a call and they'll put your numbers in for you. Um, I want to say a special thank you to our audiovisual tech, Lisa and Kevin Boining back there. Mike Aronson on, on music. Um, again, uh, Pastor Rick Hoymey for being with us today and our reader, Jolene Lobitz. Thank you so much. Um, I want to give a special thank you to the person that brought our um, red, white, and blue flower display. Um, they want to remain anonymous, but we thank them so very much for that. Um, and again, we want to just... Um, Yes, so a lot of things have been happening this weekend. We had our graduates graduate, so we want to keep them in our prayers, um, as well as the students that are be going to ending school soon and starting summer. We want to keep um, them and their families in our prayers. And as it is Memorial Day weekend, we want to keep all those that have heard the call to serve our country um, that have um, gone before us in our prayers. Thank you. I think we're singing. Yes, we are. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.